Hey, VC here. Today we're talking about $100 bike versus $1,000 bike versus $7,000 bike. I did a series of tests. I used the same power meter. I tried to keep it as scientific as possible. And I did a few different, like a climb, a flat, a descent, a sprint, a short climb, an overall like hour effort. So we're gonna look at the differences in time and at, at the same given effort, versus a hundred dollar bike versus a thousand dollar bike versus seven thousand dollar bike i'm gonna also then talk a lot about the experience okay because of course more money is gonna buy you speed but you know what i mean like at some point we're not all racers and we're just trying to enjoy the experience of road bikes does your experience of the whole thing actually improve by getting a seven thousand dollar bike even though your time may improve you know what is like the feel of the bike uh how fun it is that sort of thing so we're going to go into a little bit more in depth on just raw data on my subjective take on these three bikes also this is the whole package i'm not isolating a frame i'm not isolating the bars or position okay this is the entire package all of these things are going to combine to give these these efforts also the position right my canyon is way more race geometry so the the my ability to get arrow and put down power does factor in okay so we're not isolating anything it's the overall package let's talk about it So first of all, the three bikes that I'm testing, the $100 bike, which is actually $129 uh, from Walmart, is this Kent road bike, okay? It is uh, not great, okay? But it's, it's what you would expect for $129. It has down tube shifters, uh, has very big wide tires. It's extremely heavy. It weighs in at about 35 pounds. It uh, has a triple um, and it's not, I mean, the, the, the crank and the, the gearing and the shifting and everything about it is horrific. The brakes, bro, the brakes. So, like, the the levers, like you would have on a normal bike, they're almost just for show. You can't really actually use those for brakes. So they have these little, like, levers on the top bars. The next step up is the Schwinn carbon fastback. So it's a full carbon frame, has 105 components on it. Now, I believe this is actually, if you look on Amazon, this retails for $13.99. So it's a little bit more than $1,000, right? Uh, it's not an actual $1,000 bike, uh, just slightly over a $1,000 bike. But I'm sure if you got, you know, there's probably some deals or you could find one used. So we're using this as our $1,000 bike. The Schwinn is, uh, has a compact gear ratio. The wheels, the tires on this, I, I feel like everything about the Schwinn is actually pretty pretty good except for the seat I wasn't a fan of the seat and then the wheels uh, that they're very very skinny and so I'll get into this a little bit later but it actually it, it made me not as confident on the bike because of how skinny the the tires were the Schwinn carbon fastback weighs in at 19 pounds so it's I mean it's not super heavy by any means it's pretty light compared to you know a lot of road bikes out there so that's actually a huge benefit is, is how light it is given the price my seven thousand dollar bike is the canyon slx9 i did a whole review on it uh this thing is phenomenal out of the box though it is around five thousand dollars but i've upgraded the wheels on this to the princeton carbon works uh, they're phenomenal wheels they're super aero they have like this sort of uh wavy design to them um i've also got really expensive rubber on there they're tubeless so they roll better uh the wheels is what i am saying that this bike is seven thousand dollars the whole package is probably seven thousand when you add in the wheels uh it's got durace components on it except for the crank I actually got swapped out for altegra so i could have a 50 34 on there the canyon weighs in at 14 pounds with pedals it's so super light super duper light um and it's stiff and it's arrow with the wheels and the position and i love it i freaking love this bike okay so for the test i used Asimia 
Asayama, Asayama, these dual power pedals, right? So um, to keep the power consistent, I just used power pedals. But so let's talk about how I did these tests, right? I did this loop, this chili pepper loop. It has a bunch of segments inside of the loop. The first segment is a flat, twisty section where I held 300 watts. Is looking at a lot about the arrow. Held 300 watts, then I tried to hold something like 170 to 180 watts to the next big climb. This had a descent on it. Then I hit a big climb, about a four mile climb, held 290 watts on this climb. Then a descent, which I just kind of didn't pedal, right? And I just sort of coasted down and then there was a little kicker so I had to pedal over that. Then a little noodle section to a sprint, an all out sprint, which then concludes the actual overall loop. So we'll have a time for that. And then separate from that, I actually did a uh, a 0 0.01 mile pitch up. Now again, conditions, man. Conditions are so important, right? A slight wind, tailwind or headwind or just the moisture in the air, especially over this 18 mile loop if we're talking about the whole thing. So I would say like plus or minus a minute depending on conditions. But I, there, I mean, what are you supposed to do? You can't isolate everything. And dude, that's the thing about like doing these tests or science on bikes when you take everything and you isolate everything like of course you're going to find by having one extra whisker on your face technically that's going to make a difference but when you add in all the other variables it kind of mutes that out right so i like the tests where you're not able to isolate everything identically because it shows you more real world how it is okay let's get into the results right and then i'm going to go through the results and then i'm going to tell you my experience of each one of these bikes flat section 5.4 miles okay walmart bike goes 16 minutes 18 seconds the the walmart bike i actually felt like i was in a bit of a more aero position than i was on the schwinn the schwinn our thousand dollar bike did 14.34 so that's one minute and 44 seconds faster over a five mile route than the Walmart bike. My Canyon did 1401. So that's only 33 seconds faster than the Schwinn, two minutes and 17 seconds faster than the Walmart bike. Also, I drove this route in a car. So to give you some sort of ceiling, because when you say, dude, it's only 33 seconds faster, there, time doesn't work like that, right? It's not like it's just this linear thing of, of time. There is a physical limit that despite power or what I'm on, you know what I mean? Like you're not gonna be able to go a hundred hours fat, right? So in the car, the flat section did 11 minutes and 18 seconds. So two minutes and 43 seconds faster than the Canyon. So to say like, human potential if i just uncorked it and was on the fastest bike ever going as fast as i possibly could i could maybe improve my time by two minutes and 43 seconds i'm going to talk a lot about the car later but let's get through the rest of these okay rollers this is a 4.7 mile section uh mostly downhill walmart bike does 15.59 schwinn does 1351 that's two minutes and eight seconds faster and then the Canyon goes 1241, which is one minute and 10 seconds faster than the Schwinn, three minutes and 18 seconds faster than the Walmart bike. And again, this was just sort of noodling. I thought that this section was actually gonna be much more similar um, because I wasn't really pushing any power. I wasn't going super hard. The climb, this is probably maybe one of the more important uh, parts to this. 4.7 mile climb. 25 minutes, three seconds for the Walmart bike. Now, down tube shifters on my Walmart bike were horrific. It was so difficult to climb because you can't stand and shift at the same time. It was not great. I honestly thought though it was gonna be a way worse time because of how like the gears were clunking and chunking and it was so hard to find the right gear. Uh, there was a lot of times where I was like, almost not even pedaling trying to get it to get into gear but so the Schwinn did it in 2310 it's only a minute and 53 seconds faster than a super heavy bike the Walmart is 35 pounds 
uh, the Schwinn is 19, right? So I was really surprised at actually how how the Walmart bike or went so fast. The Canyon, 20 minutes, 54 seconds. So that's two minutes and 16 seconds faster than the Schwinn, four minutes and nine seconds faster than the Walmart bike. So a difference of $6,800 on a five mile climb got me four minutes at the same given power. That's kind of crazy. Um, again, the Schwinn, two minutes difference than the Canyon. The descent, just kind of rolling over the, the, the top of the climb. Walmart bike, six minutes, 34 seconds. Schwinn, six minutes, seven seconds. That's 27 seconds faster. And then the Canyon, five minutes and 27 seconds. That's 40 seconds faster than the Schwinn and a minute and seven seconds faster than the Walmart. But the descent was only two miles, 2.2 miles. So that's like, I feel, really shows the arrow gains. But I thought, I really thought the Walmart bike would actually do better than the Schwinn on the descent because of how heavy it is. But uh, it didn't. And my, my Canyon, a minute and seven seconds faster, just, just sheerly on the aerodynamics. So I think that has a lot to do with the wheels, my Princeton carbon wheels on the Canyon. Okay, spin to sprint. This is just sort of noodling around 160 to 170 watts and then with an all-out sprint. Uh, Walmart bike, 7 minutes, 22 seconds. My max power was 607 watts because I was very confident that the bike, the, the Walmart bike was going to just fall apart sprinting. So I didn't really go full gas, okay? Schwinn. Six minutes, 32 seconds, that's 50 seconds faster. I hit 902 watts on that sprint. Felt pretty good. I mean, the, Sch the Schwinn was a sturdy bike. It wasn't, I wasn't worried about that at all. And then the Canyon did uh, five minutes and 12 seconds. That's a minute 20 faster than the Schwinn, two minutes and 10 seconds faster than the Walmart bike, and I hit 980. Which again, I, it's weird how going hard or going easy seems to still like the time separation is still significant the short climb this is sort of like a not an all-out sprint but a really good little dig the walmart bike did 59 seconds the schwinn did 52 seconds that's seven seconds faster the canyon did 48 that's four seconds faster than the schwinn 11 seconds faster than the walmart bike uh let's talk about the overall loop though so this is sort of uh, over an 18.8 mile loop. The Walmart bike did one hour, 11 minutes, 14 seconds. Uh, 233 watt average. The Schwinn, our thousand dollar bike, okay? So for another 1200 bucks, it did it in one hour, three minutes, 56 seconds. That's seven minutes, 18 seconds faster than the Walmart bike. Uh, 234 watt average. Canyon, so for now for take away from the Schwinn and saying, let's add seven thousand dollars fifty five hundred dollars i did fifty seven fifty eight so broke an hour on this loop that's five minutes fifty eight seconds faster than the schwinn 13 minutes 16 seconds faster than the walmart bike so that's kind of nuts right six minutes faster than the schwinn 13 minutes faster than a walmart bike given same power right now Back to this car, I drove this loop. I kind of tried to keep it real, like I wasn't going 80 miles an hour, right? But I, was, for the most part, was going way faster than a bike would go, especially on the climb. Like there's, there's no way that you're gonna be able to, like I was doing 40 miles an hour up the climb. You're not doing that. No one is doing that, no one. Uh, so let's say I did in the car, it was 34 minutes, 41 seconds. That's 23 minutes faster than the Canyon. So let's just, let, I mean, I think you could safely say the human potential, like Chris Froome on a TT bike, best conditions, maybe 45 minutes, 40 minutes on this loop. It's not like the, the gains, the, the, uh, the diminishing returns really shows itself at the end there. So like, it doesn't matter if you spent a billion dollars, like there's just a human limit to what you can do. So I just think that's really interesting. It gives you some sort of ceiling and context to what these numbers mean.
It's like, of course, the more money you spend, the faster your bike's gonna go. And at a certain point, it's marginal gains, right? The, uh, at the world level, the, the top, top level, you could spend $25,000 to gain one second. And that might be totally worth it in that avenue, okay? But if you're not racing, does it matter? Does it matter to have a $7,000 bike? What's the total experience? What's the whole package like versus 7,000 versus 1,000 versus 129? So I did this in reverse. I did the Canyon test first, the Schwinn, then the Walmart bike. When I go out on my, my Canyon, I'm just very comfortable with that. And I was able to be in an aero position comfortably just because of the way the geometry set up. So I felt very comfortable on my Canyon, obviously, but the, but I'm in a race position, no matter what, right? I'm just in a race position. When I was on the Schwinn, I felt, I was like very impressed on how comfortable it was, but duh, cause it's not a race geometry. It's not a race bike, it's a road bike. And so I, I was upright a little bit more. I could totally ride a hundred miles on that Schwinn, no problem. It was a very comfortable bike. Like I said, it's 19 pounds, um, has decent components on it. I, I would say that though the tires were so skinny that when I was kind of railing through some of the turns on the flat section, I wasn't comfortable and I actually let off some of the power and upgrading the tire width or the tire material. That's probably something I would suggest on, on that. But it was very it was very comfortable, man. And the experience between my Canyon and the Schwinn were very similar very similar super hard to tell much of a difference between one or the other in the overall experience sitting on it and pedaling obviously performance you can see a lot of a, a big difference okay but you can't really feel that performance necessarily while you're on the bike and just enjoying riding around the lake now the Walmart bike uh, not a great experience it's not the right tool for the, for the sport of cycling if you want to ride down to the store on a flats, if you want to go to college or school and you don't care about getting scratched or you just, you just need a mode of transportation. Sure, dude, 129 bucks. Why not? But it is not designed to uh, be in part of the sport of cycling. And I'm sure that someone's going to be like, dude, I have a Walmart bike and I've climbed Mount Everest on it on a wheelie. Screw you. Okay. But, Obviously, at some point, you would like to have a better experience, you know what I mean? And when I went out and rode this Walmart bike on the flats, not that bad, dude. Honestly, wasn't that bad. It wasn't like as soon as I got on it, I was like, this is terrible. Uh, but as I started to run into parts of cycling, turning, braking, climbing, this is where it was like, oh, this is not, this is not good at all. The bike was so heavy that standing on it felt very the but the tires dude the tires on the walmart bike were very wide and so it actually felt safe which is weird right uh, it did it, it felt pretty safe but it's not okay the components are not safe everything is so cheap so when you're talking about if you're actually going on like a four hour ride with big descents and climbs and and the whole part of cycling dude you you don't have confidence that that bike's gonna make it my thought is, if you have $129 to spend, get a fixed gear bike. They're like State Bicycles, I think has $200 bikes, $300 bikes. Like you could definitely, for under $500, get a, a nice machine. Um, that's way better than the Walmart bike. It's just not worth it. The Walmart bike is not worth it in any way. It's not the same experience. You could play baseball uh, with a beach ball. You could do it. But it's, and same rules, same stadium, but it's not gonna be the same experience. And that's how the Walmart bike is. It's, it, it, it looks similar to a road bike. It's just not the same thing. But dude, honestly, the, like I said before, the experience between the Schwinn and the, uh, the Canyon, maybe 98% similar. When I'm standing out of the saddle and climbing, there's not a whole lot of difference. When I'm riding on the flats, if I'm just trying to enjoy the ride, this Schwinn actually feels a little more comfortable just because I'm upright more. The gear ratio is the same, the shift, like everything just felt very similar. So if you have $1,000, $1,200, getting something like the Schwinn 
Fastback or, or I'm sure there's tons of other models that offer up something at that price range but I know the Schwinn has a carbon fiber frame so it's it's decently light like I said 19 pounds my very first bike was a Jameis Venture $700 it was an aluminum frame and I raced it a lot I rode a ton on it you know what I mean so I have put some time into a sub thousand dollar bike $700 versus $1,200 actually is a is a big jump like you're gonna make a lot of gains in that small amount of uh, money window so I don't know dude I definitely recommend a thousand dollar bike eleven $1 hundred dollar bike something like that the Schwinn carbon fastback is uh, like I said $13.99 on Amazon I'm not getting any kickbacks if you buy this bike okay it's just what I have available to me as, as the thousand dollar bike one other thing I want to talk about though is when you're like hey two minutes difference on a climb from your Schwinn to the the canyon that's not much time on a climb but when you think it's the same given power so if you were out riding with a bunch of guys and they're all on seven thousand eight thousand dollar bikes and you're on a thousand dollar bike you're to match their speed you're gonna have to increase your watts so either you're gonna have to be stronger than them and if you're not stronger than them so if you're not stronger and you have a slower bike then that spread gets really bad. You're already two minutes behind, essentially. So now you gotta up your watts just to stay the same level. So now you're doing more power than they are, but you're not stronger than them. So you're gonna crack, you're gonna blow up. And so then at the top of the climb, they've been waiting for three, four minutes, right? And so now they're fresher than you, and now they're gonna start going. You know what I mean? And so over, say, a three or four hour ride with climbs and descents, that time adds up. Right, the whole loop, the, the hour loop was seven, uh, six minutes. It was six minutes faster from the Schwinn to the Canyon. But that's at the given, same given power. So if you're not able to sustain that power, that, that gap even gets bigger. And then if you were to go another two, three hours on top of that, your gap just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And to close essentially a 30 minute gap over a four hour ride, if you don't have the fitness, you know what I mean? Like that's a big, that actually is significant. Anyway, man, hope you enjoyed. Uh, Walmart bike's terrible. Schwinn, really amazing for the price. My Canyon is a speed machine and I love it and I'll never give it up. Uh, if you wanna check out the, sh the Carbon Schwinn, I've linked the description to the Amazon page for the Carbon Fastback Schwinn. Um, don't buy the Walmart, I'm not gonna link that because that's ridiculous. And as always, vegan cyclist, you. I mean, if I'm paying $7,000 for a bike, why don't I have a kickstand?